Hello, it's James from X Robots. Look, I'm in my new workshop I've just set up. Look at all this space we've got to work. We've got a nice bench here. Got my drill press. Probably need to put some more tools out. There's only one saw there at the moment. Need to get those out of the toolbox upstairs. Now, I do a lot of 3D printing in my channel and in one of the last exosuit videos, I said I was gonna get some new tools so I can make some parts out of metal as well for those parts that have to be really strong. So let's see what's over here. Yes, that's right, it's a CNC router kit from cncrouterparts.com. It was 175 kilograms on a pallet. I've built this bench to put it on, which I hope is strong enough. It's in lots of boxes and there's more on the floor. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Now I should say that this kit was sponsored by CNC Router Parts, but they're not paying me to say it's great. But hopefully it's gonna be fantastic for the channel. So let's get on with it. So opening up the first box, there's a label that says, look at cncrouterparts.com slash instructions for the assembly. So let's have a look at that. So here's the website. The machine I have is the Benchtop Pro range. So there's various different machines in the range. You can have a look at this website and all the instructions are free to download. So we've got PDFs for the instructions and we've also got a video at the bottom here uh, which pretty much shows all of the steps of putting it together. It's a 20 minute video, just skip through it there. But the thing I'm going to be doing is looking at the PDF. So this has actually got engineering drawings all the way through, tells you what to do step by step, a bit like IKEA furniture. So I'm going to get that on my laptop, take it back to the workshop and we'll work through unboxing and putting it together. I've started to get some of the pieces out of the boxes. All I can say is so far this looks extremely substantial. It's made of these massive pieces of aluminium extrusion, which uh, even though aluminium's light, that's pretty heavy. And there's lots more of it that I can't even get in shot. Right, that's the actual cutting tool, the spindle that's gonna cut things. And they've also sent me a set of router bits. So uh, yeah, this looks pretty substantial. This is a serious piece of kit. So we've got these two ball screw driven axes. Inside this cover's actually a ball screw that drives this up and down. Eventually there'll be a stepper motor on the end. There's two of those, and we've got these three bits of aluminium that bolt in the middle. So that should make the extremely substantial base for the machine. To attach this together, we've got these things, which is an M8 socket cap bolt in a little thing there, and that drops into the extrusion. And then we can tighten that in there to tighten it into the side. So that's the main base together, which is pretty heavy by itself. And we've got two sliders that go this way now, and now we need the other one that goes this way, and that's made of this, which is just a solid piece of aluminium, really. And there's two of them. Those plates, of course, bolt onto the sliders, and we've got M8 bolts with T-nuts that slot into that slot there to bolt it all on. Those are attached, so now this other big piece of aluminium goes in here. So there's another one of these that fits on there, but to get it on we need to take these dust covers off so we can get to the bolt holes. And then there must be something else that goes on here to go up and down that takes the cutter up and down. I've just slid back one of the axes here on the side so that I can get my T-nuts in, otherwise there's no way to put them in that I can see. Yes, there's one more of these, which is a bit shorter, and that's a Z-axis to take the tool up and down. And that, of course, mounts on there. So that's the main assembly for the mechanics of the machine assembled. We've got our main axis that goes backwards forwards, we've got the gantry axis, and then we've got Z going up and down. So now we just need to put some motors and electronics in. So we've got four fairly large stepper motors there, and we've got these aluminium adapters that go onto the shaft with a key, and those go into the ball screw. So each motor actually has a key on the shaft, if you can just see that there, and there's a corresponding notch in the adapter. So that should push on there, and then there's a nice grub screw to do up to make it nice and tight. So hopefully you can see inside, there's a corresponding shape, and that's on the end of each ball screw. And there's a piece of plastic on the end of each motor there that fits in between, and that means it can skew sideways in two axis, and it doesn't put any load on the motor. So there's a motor for each ball screw at the back, one on the end here, and one on top for the Z axis. 
I've installed the cable tracks that allow the cables to neatly go round when this thing goes side to side. And there's another one here for this axis. The bed of the machine itself is made from these 8020s and all of these of course bolt down to the extrusion below and that allows you to fix the workpiece down by using similar things in the slot with bolts or clips that come over to hold it down. My spindle motor is installed on the axis as a 2.2 kilowatt three phase motor. It's got five or six pins in the connector and it needs a special driver to make it work. Here it is. So that's got a commercial unit inside for driving three phase motors. It's got the power in here for outlet power, the connector that goes to the motor and a connector that goes to the other box. Here's the main CNC driver box and that's got all of the connectors here for the end stop switches. It's got the connector that goes to the motor and it's also got ethernet in so that we can actually plug a computer in. Inside there is a big AC power supply, a CNC router parts board, the smooth stepper for ethernet and we've got the stepper motor drivers hidden right behind those as well as some breakers and all the connectors, a fan and everything else. Just starting to cable all of this lot in so we put in all these cables for the end switches, the motors and of course the main spindle motor through the cable trays. All those cables of course come along the upper cable track and into the bottom one here and they go down to the control box and there's quite a lot of cables to route. I've mounted the two control boxes down here on a piece of wood attached to the bench and that means we can run all these cables down and it's all nice and neat and tidy. There's my e-stop. Right that's all wired in and you can probably hear the fan whirring because I've just powered it up. So we need to look at some software on a laptop to drive this and Mac 3 is being provided with this kit. So we've got Mac 3 running on my laptop and this is basically a piece of software that drives the machine over ethernet. There's a massive setup guide on the cncrouterparts.com website but very roughly I can move the arrow keys and we should be able to see these numbers changing as we move the machine around. So let's just reset it and you can hear that in the background. So that's X and Y and the Z axis which is page up and page down. So let's just auto home the machine. That should bring every axis to the home points. And that's the home proximity sensor there and there's one at each end of each axis. You'll notice there are two home proximity sensors on the front edge here and it uses one to actually home the axis and the other one to get the machine square. So we can adjust those basically to adjust this axis if we're not cutting square pieces and there's a calibration process for that. If we power on the other box we can actually power the spindle up so I don't know if you can just see the end there you probably can't see whether it's turning but you can probably hear it. And it goes up all the way to something like 24,000 RPM. There are a number of collets provided, which are these, which screw on there. And then you use two spanners to do them up tight and that's the thing that grips the end there so it's got basically a thing there with holes all the way around that gets clamped shut and that clamps the router bits. I've also got this accessory that plugs into the same box and that's got a magnet and this is for finding the corner of your workpiece apparently but I need to go through the setup of that. I think you align that with the corner and the magnet sticks onto the thing and then it knows when it's touching it or something like that. Probably should look at the instructions. So the machine's together and it functions, but I actually need to learn how to use it. So we're gonna come back for our part two and hopefully actually cut some stuff. There's a number of things I need to do, including making a spoil board to go on here, which is a piece of wood, because obviously when you cut through the part to cut something out, you don't want to cut into the aluminium. 
So you have a piece of wood essentially bolted down. I've also got to do some stuff with that corner finder. I probably need a cabin to put this in to keep the noise and mess in and some dust extraction. And I've also got some software from Vectric to try. So don't forget to check out part two. Thanks again to cncrooserparts.com for this marvellous machine. And we'll see you next time.